Yesterday, Guillermo Rauch, the CEO of Vercel, realized that I'm spending weeks just setting up all this stuff around React. Instead, he spent eight years to speed up that process for every other developer. Next.js 15 aims to achieve that. Caching no longer sucks. Yeah, caching improvements. Hydration errors improved. Developers not yet ready, saying that Next.js is eating React, that there's too much magic going on and thinking they'll have to rewrite their apps to keep up. I used to agree with all of these claims, but I no longer do. This is not my first rodeo. So for that reason, in this video, I'll give you a quick, no-nonsense breakdown of what happened during Vercel's ship conference and bring you up to date. And no, this isn't sponsored by Vercel, it's just my honest take on the news. Alongside this video, I've also prepared a quick Next15 guide that outlines the most important new features. Check it out in the description. With that said, you don't need to run to update your code immediately. RC stands for Release Candidate, meaning it will move to GA or General Availability later this year while they wait for React 19 to be fully supported. And I'm happy to say that we'll update our ultimate Next.js course to V15 as soon as that happens, teaching you how to leverage the most important React 19 features and the React compiler, which Next15 supports by default. Improved caching methods, partial pre-rendering, and even this new next after thingy. And to make sure I can explain it properly, I've already done the research. In the next 15 guide, you can already start learning about all this stuff. First and foremost, next 15 now supports React 19's use, replacing most React hooks or everybody's pain of having no ability to pass ref as a prop. But what's even more interesting is that Next.js now supports the newly open sourced React compiler, which optimizes your code out of the box, eliminating use memo and use callback hooks. And that's great for multiple reasons. Having been a developer for a long time, it has been a huge pain to see many developers either skipping or misusing these optimization techniques. This is where React compiler comes into the picture. It helps your app run faster by automatically figuring out which parts of your code do or don't need to be rechecked if they haven't changed, saving time. And if you're interested in understanding the inner workings of React Compiler, make sure to check out the official docs explaining how it chooses which components to memoize or to skip. Moving ahead, Next.js has finally decided to stay away from modifying global web APIs. Before Next15, using fetch would cache its results for you. This upset some devs as Next.js was directly changing the global API. But after seeing the confusion it caused, they fixed it. It was similar with route handlers. By default, get API routes were being cached, which left everyone confused, wondering, why do I keep getting the same results over and over? It was meant to be helpful, but it backfired. So thankfully, Next.js heard us, and starting from Next15, fetch, route handlers, and client navigation using Link won't automatically cache results anymore. But if you do want to cache something, you can simply pass a flag to make it happen. You might have heard me talking about SSG, ISR, and SSR plenty of times in my courses. By default, Next.js performs an SSG rendering strategy. And to use the other two, we can just provide a flag to that page and switch to them immediately. But you needed to choose only one. Now we can do something else entirely. We can make one part of the page SSG, while the other part of the page is SSR or ISR, combining the best of both worlds. This new approach is called PPR, partial pre-rendering. And if you're wondering whether this could actually be helpful and work as described, it does. It really does. And to show you, here's the demo using this PPR strategy. Keep your eyes glued on the screen while I explain this. Notice that if you refresh the page, you'll see that the product details remain static while the recommended products and pricing update with each refresh. Another use case of partial pre-rendering 
can be found within our dev or flow application where question details can stay static with SSG while the voting and answers are dynamic with SSR. So if you're enrolled in our Next.js course, you'll soon find a new section that covers this feature and explains how to implement it in any Next.js project. Another cool feature Next.js has introduced is Next After. A bit of a confusing name, but I think it makes sense. When the browser requests the website code, the server does a bunch of stuff to send it back to you. But many times, alongside the website, it also needs to do extra things. Now, it's not fair that you have to wait longer just because the server has some extra stuff to do. So next after lets the server do all the important stuff first, and only then it takes care of the extra tasks without making you wait. A real example of where you would use this is YouTube views. YouTube can first process your request and send this video out to you. And while you're watching it, it can increase the view counter, feed the algorithm with your preferences and update the analytics, but you get the video first. That's how you can use next after, but enough talk. How can we really use those next 15 features? Well, to use next 15 for now, you have to run MPX create next app at RC instead of latest, but only for now, because around the end of this year, we're most likely to see all of these features being stable alongside the usual installation questions. It will also ask you about turbo turbo pack is a super organized high speed bundler for web developers. Just like Webpack bundles up all your website's files and assets, TurboPack does the same, but faster and smoother. From v15, Next.js will begin adopting it as the primary bundler in development mode instead of Webpack, aiming to speed up development process. If you're excited about seeing all of these features in action with a step-by-step -step video, let me know down in the comments and I'll make it. Next.js has also added support for bundling external packages. In the app directory, they're bundled by default to improve the cold start of the application, reducing latency and improving the overall developer experience. There have also been so many other changes. Also not directly related to Next15, but Vercel's latest features they added to V0. Now their AI streams the response while it's creating the final output. No need to wait, click it and AI will write the code line by line while you're watching it do it, but it's still only making some basic HTML stuff. So no need to worry that it will replace you, but I have to give it to it. It has silky smooth streaming. We love streaming. <laughs> That's it for this quick video and I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day.